Today I was thinking to myself when I want to make this video on JD.com, I wanted to make something that's evergreen, meaning that something you can use it and watch it again and you use examples from what's current in the market. Something where it's educational and a video that also talks about what's up right now. Good news is this video is proudly sponsored by Macquarie. Let's talk about how to define trend using swing high swing low i know that we have different methods but to me what is most important is the method that consistently work and this is the method that I consistently used and they consistently become so clear in my analysis and then it works okay so let's talk about how to define a downtrend okay so for example when we talk about a downtrend then what you need to start off with is four points right you need to have a high so that's your high and you need to have a low and when price moved up to make a lower high as compared to the previous high it must always be compared to the previous high point and when price moves to be below the previous low to make a lower low as compared to the previous low then these four points together will make a downtrend and if price continue to make a lower high and a lower low then the downtrend continue okay so you need minimum four points for a downtrend now when we talk about an uptrend then it is the opposite so same thing you need a starting point and then you need another starting point right so we start out with a low and then we start out with a high and then when price moves down to make a higher low that means that you compare to the previous low the low point that it's being made is a higher low and when price break above the previous high to make a higher high so you have these four points and these four points will result in an uptrend and if price continue to make a higher low and a higher high then the uptrend continue so basically this is the most basic definition of an uptrend and a downtrend and you find that they consistently work but what's the problem in terms of we've, if you put it into analysis the problem lies in multiple time frame that means that when you start to visualize the uptrend and a downtrend then in different time frames it gets a little bit messed up so what i did is to apply this indicator here that shows the pivot point or the turning point all right that marks in the high and the low okay so same thing it starts off with a point here that's the high and then it starts another one more low point here so you can see that subsequently for jd.com which the code is 9618 that's listed in hong kong exchange then the next high is a lower high as versus the previous high and then when you see this low point here then it is a lower low as versus the previous low so it's very clear that that in the weekly chart for JD, the trend is right now down because we do see a series of lower low, lower low, and a lower high. So let me just zoom in here and talk about what happened recently to JD.com. Now for JD.com, recently we see that the high point surpassed the previous high. So this was a high point here and then this was another high point here, right? But the indicator drew in a higher high at this point of time. That means it is showing a higher high versus a previous high so this means that there is right now sign of a possible reversal on a trend that's mainly down that means the biggest trend right the main trend is still down but we are right now seeing a possible trend reversal with this higher high versus the previous high now what is necessary is to determine that this point here is a higher low that means you want to know that any of the low point must be at a higher point than the previous low then it gives us a clue that could be a possible reversal so right now what i'm going to do is to check whether this is a higher low and because price hasn't really turned yet i can't do that i need to wait for a price to make a full completed turning point so the best thing i could do is to take the fibonacci tools and to draw that and to decide or to see and observe whether it is right now into a support region yes jd is right now into a support region at 62 percent so there could be a bit of a turning point here 
All right. Then the second thing is that if we put in the support and resistance levels, then you know that JD is right now near to a bit of a previous support that's again become a support level here. So to know that JD continues its upward movement, then one thing is necessary. JD needs to continue to move higher and eventually it needs to clear and close above this previous high. Otherwise, the previous high would be a resistance level. Okay, so let's jump on to take a look at some of the key levels of JD. All right, this part, let's take a look at the price level of JD.com. Uh, this is again listed in Hong Kong 9618 and uh, I'm at the daily chart. This is a support level and um, the resistance level for JD as I mark in here. All right, so that's about 110 to 116. So where are these levels from? So these levels are from this high here. All right, and also a couple of this high. So uh, you find that price is reacting very well to these previous levels here, previous historical levels, especially somewhere around here and then recent price levels. Now, this means that in order for JD to continue to move up, all right, to show more signs of a bullish reversal for price to continue to be bullish, then JD will need to be above 116. All right, otherwise, this whole... Uh, level here as in this whole zone here would act as a strong resistance so i expect that probably jd would bounce uh, between these two levels here that means a support at 95 and then a resistance around the 110 to 115 levels all right I'm right now at macquariewarrens.com.sg page. As I said, it's good to get prepared and to know what Warren is. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Warrens, go to Warrens Education here. So right now, I'm at the Warren Selector. So how to get the Warren Selector, go under Warren Tools, click on Warren Selector and come to this page here and then choose the underlying, which is JD.com. If you are bullish, let's say in the near future, then you click on a call warrant. If you are bearish in the near future, then you click on a put warrant. So let me just key in this call warrant here. For uh, this call warrant, there is this warrant which expire on the Jan uh, 2025. And then let's do a bit of a simulation. If I think that at the current price of 100, then JD might move to the next uh, resistance at 110. And then it might happen in the next two weeks. So this would be the uh, simulated returns of this warrant here. So for example, if you are bearish on JD, because let's say for example, because of the news, you think that JD might move down lower to the stronger support level. So I chose a put warrant here and I say that it might move to let's say $95, which is the next support. All right, so these would be the projected returns of this particular put warrant. Likewise, it's, let's say for example, if price move in the opposite direction, if you have chosen a put warrant, which in nature uh, you will benefit if price of the underlying is to move down, but if price of the underlying moves up, let's say for example, instead of moving down, it moves to higher, let's say 110, so this would be the uh, projected uh, loss from this particular warrant. Let me know what you think of this educational series to talk about certain concepts of how I analyze, how I approach a chart, but at the same time to look at the current market conditions and to talk about stocks that you're interested in. If you can, do leave a comment and I know your feedback. And uh, if there's any other stocks or any other concept that you would like me to cover, remember to leave a comment in the comment section. And remember to click the subscribe button if you like this video and I'll see you in my next video.